I am, actually. Um, I'm a member of Greenpeace. I'm a member of Sea Shepherd. Uh, I've narrated uh, some documentaries on saving whales. Uh, I'm very much into whales and into uh, those species that are about to become extinct. Whales probably not extinct, but why certain nations can continue to kill whales uh, for the meat when they can eat something else. And, uh, you know, everything's so screwed up in our environment that if you give it a half a chance, you see that these, like in uh, San Clemente Island, you see a, a, uh, an area that's set aside, uh, it becomes a, a, a fish protected area. It comes back within 10 years with fish that are uh, not being taken because of the protection that they have now uh, begin to uh, 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 migrate and fill up the emptiness that, that the ocean is mostly. And so whales and cod, for God's sake, they overfished the cod, they knew they were overfishing the cod. Now the cod aren't big enough to show the young cod where to migrate. I mean, it's so complex. The wolves introduced in the Yellowstone drive the elk and the deer out of the streams and up to the pastures because now the elk and the deer think, oh, I better not stand around. I better get some place where I can run. They discover that because they release the wolves and because the deer and the elk go up, the bush bushes alongside the river are able to grow. They're not being trampled. The insects come to the bush. The birds come to the... And suddenly, nature's here. So whales play a huge part in and we should all be very much aware of the interconnectedness of our brain. So much for that. <laughs> uh, I ride and breed and train horses. I was at a horse show uh, last week, I won the championship. There I will be uh, competing uh, all year round in three different groups. What do you think of the state of science fiction on television today? Do you watch any of it, or how has it changed since well, you started? Well, you know, uh, I, I, what, what is on television in science fiction? I don't think there, there isn't a real series that's on television that I know of. What? There isn't a lot. I don't think so. But what's happened, of course, <laughs> is the computer graphics have, uh, have are reaching uh, such an extraordinary point that they've taken over the magic, or they are the magic of uh, of movies. And and, and great, uh, we can uh, do things in the movies uh, just by imagining. Them. And then some wonderful artist draws it and it comes alive. That's the magic of science fiction. And yet, having said that, the other part of the magic of science fiction is the word and your imagination about what that is without seeing the picture. So I'm in the midst of uh, doing a science fiction comic book, which will be part of a program of film, of filming of the comic book and making it come along. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing that has to do with science fiction. <laughs> Um, generally not. No. Daytime active? Daytime? Oh, yeah. What's your favorite Oh, make love to my wife. I don't know she was the one. Um, she uh, returned my hug. <laughs> uh, she's a, a really extraordinary individual. She's very intelligent and, and very funny and very beautiful. That combination turned to come by. Uh, and I was very lucky to find it. Do you have a favorite TV show Dancing with the Stars? And why? Because, first of all, they're beautiful people. 
doing beautiful things. And then, if you watch closely, you can see an involvement of the relationships just by the eyes, the gesture, the mouth. In subtle ways, you see these people changing, not only physically, physically and getting better as dancers, but the relationships change. And I've become a good friend with Tom Bergeron. And uh, so we go out to dinner, uh, not as frequently as I'd like, and uh, I get all the gossip. <laughs> well, they've asked me uh, or, 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 or quite frequently, but uh, I don't have the time. It's four months of arduous work. Uh, favorite movie? Favorite movie? I really enjoyed the life of uh, life of Pi uh, this year more than anything else. I find myself watching films uh, at home. I've got the mechanical means of showing it uh, really well and sound. And so I haven't been to a movie theater in a long time. You know, many people put that question. They want me to ask a question of myself <laughs> that I've never answered before. Um, but is there any you know, does Leonard Nimoy wear a jock strap? I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I mean, over the years, pretty much everything has been examined. Uh, but I don't mind answering the same questions. It's, uh, I can understand your interest and, and appreciate it. Don't mind answering. Uh, Recently, I, in this last couple of years, I've been out on the tour. I, I opened a, on Broadway a uh, one-man show called Shack. And I wrote it and acted it one man show. Uh, an hour and a half on Broadway and uh, by myself and then went on tour. I think to 40 cities and I'll probably go to 10 more in Germany. So 50 city tour of a one man show. But every night that I went out there, especially in the beginning, when the people would stand up and cry, I was overwhelmed by by the feeling uh, in front of the people and the affection that, that flowed across the footlights uh, was very meaningful to me. And that show, because it's my story, is meaningful. So to perform it and feel that it's being taken the way it was meant to be, getting the laughs and getting the tears and, and then ending with this standing ovation, it was, you can understand how, how extraordinary it was. So it was very difficult to do. I I had uh, stomach flu or stomach poison, I'm not quite sure, on the opening on Broadway, and I was sick for about a week, which I couldn't leave the, the, the three foot radius of the bathroom, uh, but had to go on stage. That's all. It was very difficult. But I kept thinking one day. I'll be through this, and I'll be talking to a large group of journalists and tell them about being sick of opening up Broadway. <laughs> and I was trying to take that historical point of view, and here I am telling you about it. Moving a horse sideways means the horse moves off your leg, and it's a very key button that a horse has to have. A horse has to back up, has to go forward, has to move to the side. In Rainers, which is what I compete a lot in, they have to do things like this, 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 and they have to come in and slide 30 feet to a stop. That's Rainers. So moving sideways is is uh, part of, you know, it's like reading. Well, it was, well, I, I've spent a good part of my adult life riding horses. Uh, once I had some money, I, 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 I started riding. And competitive, I had to learn to I didn't grow up with a horse. So, horsemanship is a, is a spiritual thing. Are we ever going to see a 
director's cut of uh, uh, Star Trek Five? A director's cut of Star Trek Five? Yeah. I have been asked to do that. I uh, mean, they did it for Robert Wise. They let right. Nicholas Meyer do it. Right. We're going to see your turn. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there hasn't been a demand. You and I are leading that group of people. <laughs> Well, I know that the original concept changed so much during yeah. the making of it. But then if they would ever let you have the money to go back and do it. Yeah. Well, going back, the story I tell about Star Trek V is my one-line idea was Star Trek goes in search of God. Then I ran into flack, who's God, what God, we're not going to alienate people. And then somebody came up with the idea, well, what happens if it's an alien that thinks he's God? And then an alien thinks he's the devil by, by projection, there's a God. And in order to get that to be made, I agreed to it. And that was a compromise. And the difference between making a compromise and being political, and, and, and being political, and or standing to your, on your standards, where do you do that? Where do you, the editor says, cut that line, and you say, that's my whole story. I'm sorry, you got to get rid of those words. Do you say, no, I'm not going to do it? Do you say, okay, I'll do it? So we're making compromises and political judgments or standing on our, our standards all our life. Everything we do is, is that. When do you, how do you make those decisions? And that's what I had to learn on Star Trek V. I didn't, you know, for $30 million, so it was fairly public. But you've gotten a lot of fresh, a lot of mistakes, though, because with your a lot Star Trek, uh, a lot of things that have happened, like with uh, your Star Trek books, where you brought Kirk back. Yes. Uh, and also, even when you went back to when Kirk and Spock first met, and then, of course, they went a whole new direction. Right. Are we, does that give you the freedom to do other things in these books? I mean, do you enjoy well, that? Well, they, they allowed me to... to a lot of those books, uh, Star Trek books that I wrote, are autobiographical, things that happened to me. I laid on Kirk, and, and so it was, it was, the setting was futuristic. That was easy to do, but just the indigenous story was, was uh, came out of my experience. Are we going to get to see any more? Any more of these they haven't asked me, and I, I think that phase is over, I would imagine. Oh, I really enjoyed this. Thank you. I've enjoyed writing it. If you could get yourself any role in the new Star Wars movie. Star Wars movie? The lead. Harrison Ford uh, uh, progressed. Uh, <laughs> You recently did an episode of Hot in Cleveland. Can you talk about that experience? Um, TV Land uh, said we we're doing a stunt and doing this live. We're doing a, a first show of the season. We're going to do it live. Will you play the part? So they paid me well. They asked me to, to do it, and I it seemed like fun. So and I know Valerie Bertinelli. Uh, Valerie, Valerie uh, uh, is. Uh, her property backs off up on mine, so she, we're 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 neighbors. Her backyard, and my backyard, and she said, oh, "There's some trees I have to cut down." <laughs> so if you do it, I won't cut down the trees. <laughs> so I did. It was great fun. I, I had fun doing the, the part, and she cut the trees off. <laughs> Typical Hollywood. <laughs> Once they got you, they got you. Can return to that show in that role? It was fun. I sort of, you know, worked up a, a character. Uh, if they asked me, I would consider it. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to see it. Yeah, cover it all. Yeah, it was interesting. Now, I uh, I skipped the psych room to be here and interview you. Did you? So, are you going to be uh, back there next season? Are you going to ask about that? Where? Uh, back to psych. Oh, psych. I don't know. They're here, huh? Yeah, they're here. I don't know. That was a good show. I enjoyed doing that. They haven't asked me. Or they asked me, and I think I wanted too much money, is what I think it is. They're, I think it's their last season. This? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was desperate. He was chasing me. Are you a couple 
I ride in competition because I'm a movie star. I, I have a little more money than the average, the average contestant. Uh, uh, I have more than one horse that I ride. In fact, I ride five or six horses. Nobody rides five or six horses. Uh, in competition. So in a class of a hundred people, I'll be there five or six times. That's, what I, that's my opinion. Are there any other projects that you have you know, going on that you're most excited about? i got a wonderful movie show okay. called The Shiva Club. Uh, I've got uh, a wonderful uh, uh, reality show uh, concept that uh, I want to do. Uh, this podcasting that I'm doing uh, called Brown Bag Wine Tasting um, can lead to all other kinds of things. Uh, the, the artistry of taste, if you will, is really intriguing. I mean, why does a wine uh, uh, explode in your mouth and then have subtle uh, and tones and then an aftertaste? So, in the brown bag wine tasting, I got uh, Dave Cass, the, uh, the saxophone, uh, a great musician. And I did a brown bag wine tasting with Dave Cass. And, he, and I said, I don't want to hear about vanilla and blueberry overtones and, and the legs. I want to hear what you think of this wine with a saxophone. He takes a saxophone out <laughs> and he plays the taste of the wine. That's the kind of thing I'm doing. Can you talk a little bit about the best day of your life ever? The best day of my life? You're on to that, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. We go deep. We go deep. Well, the best day of my life was going deep. <laughs> 150 feet from the submarine, uh, uh, seeing the, uh, the vegetation of the other animal life, and going into a submarine uh, uh, and having limited time at 150 feet, you don't have uh, too much time down. down. Uh, the magic of scuba diving was a great day. And what other things did you see from I saw a girl in a bikini. <laughs> my wife. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I saw, uh, I saw a, uh, a uh, snake. I saw a train. I saw a shark basket. I saw uh, sea cucumbers. A much maligned entity. And I saw the, um, what's the call? Uh, you know, with the, uh, the, with the wings and the, a ray, the, a matter ray, the stingray. It was either a matter ray or a stingray. A white one. You good? <laughs> <laughs> Now you mentioned that you're you, you are doing a comic book. Is there any chance you'll ever return to the Tech World series? That's an interesting question. The tech, the tech books that I did were bought by Universal, and I made a series called Tech World and a, a couple of four movies of Tech World. All this time later, somebody says that like to work with me on a comic book, tech. Mm -hmm. So we try and find who owns tech war. Mm -hmm. We never can get a decent answer. But I did write a couple of books called Man of War, uh, uh, which involved the planet Mars and workers who had been there 50 years and lived on the underground had families. And now the young people, the youth that were uh, the, the children of those workers that had come were wanted independence and they were in rebellion and I then followed the American Revolution on Mars with the young and that's man of war uh, so instead of after months of trying to find out how I can get tech war back we're doing comic books on man of war how do you juggle so many different projects at the same time because you're doing a lot of acting, you do a lot of writing. How do you, how do, you do that? I get up early. <laughs>
impressive. Well, that's true. Good for you. Uh, it's a it's a uh, play on the, on the war on the word man of war, which is a battleship, and man of war, who's the leading character, who's a diplomat. <laughs> You good? We're good. 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 We